My name is Clarence Carter, and I was born on July the 4th, 1920, in Mission City. I uh, stayed in school until I did not quite finished grade 12. Then I went directly into the Air Force. It wasn't until about maybe four or five months when we started hearing what was going on. Hitler was uh, killing off the Jews terrifically, and uh, it had to be stopped. I had taken a course in, uh, with national schools in radio and, and the refrigeration, so I thought to myself to be a wireless air gunner. So on the morning of the Valentine's Day in 1944, it was just a normal day though. We were just to do a uh, sweep. Sweep was just, a, there would be a certain area, usually up to maybe 100 square miles, and there would be a convoy coming through there within a day or so. That was our main thing give air coverage to convoys, and we'd spend all day just on that one area. It was never anything, hardly ever on a sweep. And um, I would think around all oh, about quarter after five, just before dusk. I would happen to be two hours on the wireless set. As I was there, and was being fairly quiet, I'd taken a couple of messages, and um, then they broke in really quite loud sound. But I started to take the message down, whatever it was. It was either coming through in a foreign language or else a coded language. It was something I definitely couldn't understand what was being said. The sound started to come back to me and it got louder and louder and it dawned on me. I started to say, well, what in the world is sending this sound out? It's got to be something close by and there's nothing close by. There's no boats in this area and there's something there. The only thing it's got to be is a darn submarine. I said to myself, I should tell the pilot. Almost as soon as he looked, about they, they figured it was about six miles away, it was a fully surfaced submarine. And uh, almost within a, a two or three seconds, they opened fire on us right away. From a, the, where we're at, we could never sink a submarine with our guns, not, not the 50 caliber gun. He had to get down to the ocean to, to drop the depth charges. We had to get down there to fight him. All these guns, uh, their guns coming to us, ours going back to them. The whole sky was just lit up with light. He's first run in. We did finally get down to the about, oh, I'd say maybe 20, 25 feet off the water is all right down to the ocean. Liberators usually flew at around 240 miles an hour, and I think we were well up over 300. And he really couldn't see properly, so he didn't uh, take a chance and didn't drop the, the jet charger. So uh, it was just up and around as fast as the pilot could bank around and make a tight turn and back in and from a different direction. For the second run in, he uh, turned too quick or too big. He was about a wing length off to try to get over to, to put him right where he wanted to drop the jump charges at. So all the time their ammunition's going both ways, tracers going both ways. On our third run in, things changed. Their guns all pretty well stopped. And we continued on in and uh, he could put the plane exactly right over the target. The navigator dropped the depth charges just perfectly over the submarines. Two of them straddled the sub and lifted it completely out of the water and uh, it settled back in again. So, uh, but it had disappeared. The sub had been within a, 10 seconds, it had disappeared altogether. But now comes the Navy. They uh, picked up the location that I sent out. I think there was eight boats, and they came over to that spot. But everybody on deck, I guess, were killed, except the crew, what was left. I think they took off 44 left to surrender. They took off uh, 44 prisoners of war. When we landed, they looked the plane all over. There wasn't a scratch on it, not a bullet hole in it, not a mark on it that had been anywhere. It's as if something had put a shield around the plane. We'll say it was maybe there was an angel with us that day in the plane.
Abbotsford Airport, and we were training for crews for the uh, Liberators. On June 1st, uh, one of our Liberators from Abbotsford did fly into the mountain by Chilliwack, and it turned out to be the worst uh, accident at that time. And uh, they searched and searched for 17 days before they could find it. There were no survivors. They were all killed. July the 3rd, out at the airport and uh, at the hangar there in the morning, and two planes that were staying right at the airport, they were just doing takeoffs and landings. They were flying around and around the airport. The third one, he had gone out sooner, and I think he had, uh, was returning. There was a poor communication. The tower gave him permission to land, and he was coming in from the wrong direction. This one on the ground was... Uh, taxiing uh, to take, get ready to take off again and that apparently uh, I think they were using the same runway. They just uh, collided, yes, just like two cars. And I, I'm glad in a way that I took part in the war. So, so pretty near all the young chaps here at Mission, they, there was over a thousand entered the armed forces. We could say we all volunteer at that time. We only joined it for uh, the two reasons. Uh, we wanted for the world to be back and have peace and freedom. Many times I was scared to Dickens, but it was something that had to be done. 